Baldur's Gate 3's launch is just around the corner and in this video we'll go over a couple of places, races and topics you may want to know about to help you understand the story a little bit better. First off, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate, also known as The Gate or The City of Blood, is actually the name of a large metropolitan city-state. It is located in Faerun, more specifically on the western coast of the Sea of Swords, known as the Sword Coast. As one of the most prosperous and influential merchant cities on the western coast, it attracts all sorts of people. Different races and people from different walks of life. The peace is kept by the Watch, along with the mercenary company known as the Flaming Fists. Which is definitely necessary, as with all those different people there, some have said that Baldur's Gate is a viper's nest of schemes and schemers. To the outside eye, however, Baldur's Gate is an impressive sight. As minstrels have described it, it is like a crescent moon wrapping around the Great Harbor. The region in which it lays is known for its abundance of drizzling rain, and despite its advanced water system mitigating most of this, it is still necessary to line the streets with straw or gravel to avoid slipping. One thing the Baldurians take great pride in is its inclusiveness, and despite its dense population and less savory folk that might be found, it is remarkably clean and safe for citizens and visitors alike. Despite the city's inclusiveness, there are three religions that dominate the city. For favor and safety at sea, the veneration of Umberly has been a mainstay throughout their history. The favor of Timora was often sought for greater wealth and prosperity with regards to trade, gambling and mercantiles and endeavors. Lastly, as continual expression of gratitude for the technological blessings bestowed upon the city, the worship of Gond was widespread, even beyond his temple and museum. Alright, so we've started with a little bit of backstory about the namesake of the gang, now to get into the content. First off, the Illithid. Illithid, also known as Mind Flayers, are a race of sadistic aberrations feared by sentient creatures on many worlds due to their psionic abilities. These creatures seek to expand their dominion over all other life forms, controlling their minds and feasting on their brains. Literally. If they're not feasting on their victims or mind controlling them into their slaves, they are most likely keeping them to be inserted with one of their tadpoles. The tadpole makes its way through the eye to the brain and nestles there, slowly taking over the body of its host a process known as seromorphosis. The humanoid creature loses itself entirely in both body and mind, becoming a new illithid of itself. Utterly arrogant, the illithids believe themselves to be agents of order, seeing themselves as the supreme being and all others as inferior and mere livestock to be harvested and used to their own design. Whether that was as a slave, food or a vessel. This arrogance even extends to their own kind as well. While not viewing them as generally inferior, they do generally believe themselves to be just better than their peers. The one thing they all have in common, and that is the Elder Brain. The Elder Brain is the heart of their colony, and consisted of the brains of dead Illithid. This Elder Brain had telepathic control over all Illithid from that colony. Quote, one mind flayer sees ya, and they all see. One mind, one nasty suspicious mind." End quote. Next on our list of important Baldur's Gate 3 lore are the Githyanki. To put it simply, the Githyanki are uh, space pirates. They're weird in the sense that they raid without discrimination. Good or bad, they don't care, it's what they do. But they are also the Illithid's biggest opposing force. Quote, what would become of this multiverse if Githyanki didn't guard the astral plane from the Illithid menace? What would reality become if beings of thought ruled the plane of thought?" End quote. Now, let's backtrack it a little bit. Githyanki have been enslaved by the Illithid for as long as anyone can remember. For so long even that the original name of the race has been forgotten, but it was referred to by some as the Forerunners. They now call themselves Githyanki after Gith, one of the slaves that started the rebellion that led to their freedom. Githyanki have the weird ability to be able to live in the astral plane without being affected by it, and they use this gift and the astral plane's connection to, well, everything, to organize raids and stop the Illithid wherever they can. As I said, they are kind of weird, as in, obviously their raids on settlements are bad, but they might just be one of the main reasons why the Illithid are being held back. 
After their enslavement ended, their leader Gith made a pact with the Queen of Evil Dragons Tiamat, and in exchange, the Githyanki are able to ride dragons, which aids them in intercepting the Nautiloid ships of the Illithid. There's another group of Gith as well, but again, I have full videos on most of these topics if you want more in-depth knowledge, so make sure to check those out too. Now I want to quickly touch on the subject of the Nine Hells as well, as you'll run into that as well in the game. As just said, Hell, or Bayathor in Infernal, consists of Nine Hells. It is a plane that embodies lawful evil, but all are inhospitable nor deadly to outsiders. These Nine Hells could be represented as layers stacked on top of each other, with Avernus being the most accessible for the Astral Travelers. It's a desolate wasteland with rocky terrain, sparse, twisted vegetation, concealed snake pits, caves and warrens, volcanoes and rivers of magma. The sky is starless, full of choking smoke, and glows a dark red due to the balls of flammable gas that floats about or streak across the atmosphere, randomly exploding as a fireball. The other layers are Dis, Minoros, Pegathos, Stygia, Malbolg, Maladomini, Kenya, and Nessus. I won't go into too much detail, but two more important facts to know. Each of the nine circles are ruled by an archdevil, with Osmodius being the overlord ruling from her gargantuan citadel in Nessus. And these are devils, not demons. There's a very important distinction here, as the devils and demons have actually been locked in an ancient conflict known as the Blood War. You see, both devils and demons are evil, but whereas devils represent lawful evil, demons are chaotic evil. Devils, for example, can be found to enter into contracts with other races, even those of the material plane, and they will respect that contract. Do read the fine print, though. Whereas demons, oh, they'll just slaughter you without so much as a parley. There are many deities in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm not going to go over all of them, but Shar is one you may want to know more about for Baldur's Gate 3. Shar is the Ferunian goddess of darkness and night, and the malevolent twin counterpart to the goddess of the moon Saluna. Not just the goddess of dark places, such as caves or the Underdark, but also of dark deeds, secrets, loss, and the ability to forget. The depths of Shar's evil were too extreme to be described by words. She is deeply twisted and perverse, a being of ceaseless petty hate and envy. Although Shar preferred to be a healer, soothing the grief-stricken by letting them forget their woes, she is in truth a sadist and enjoys conflicting the pain of loss on her worshippers. Her alleged help is not a release from that pain, but a numbness to it, the acceptance of it as normal and the removal of any expectation otherwise. The Lady of Loss doesn't truly believe in healing grief, not even her own, but in harnessing it, in nurturing spite, nursing indignity, and reinforcing regret until minor slights, at least in her mind, become transgressions worthy of bitter vengeance. With all of this, however, it might be curious then to know that not all of Shar's followers are evil as well. Miners, for example, can be found uttering a prayer to Shar for their safety in the darkness of the below, and those hurt by loss or deep emotional pain would pray to her to help ease their pain. There are many races that wander the Forgotten Realms, and I have videos on a lot of them, but I do think it's important to mention the tieflings in this video as well, as you'll run into them quite soon, and interactions with them might leave you wondering. Tieflings have seen some changes over the editions, but in 5th edition, where Baldur's Gate 3 is based on, they are human-based plane-touched, most often through descent from fiends, demons, devils, or evil deities who had bred with humans. This could even be dormant for generations before manifesting somewhere down the line. Unlike half-fiends, tieflings aren't predisposed to evil, and their nature varies as much as a regular human. Oftentimes, they'd go out of their way even to prove to the world that they don't have anything to do with their evil heritage. Despite this, however, Many people still view tieflings as devil's pawn, or cursed sometimes, even by their own parents if the heritage had been dormant. Because they were so distrusted, many themselves became distrusting and self-reliant. However, members of other races would find that once they demonstrated friendship and trust towards a tiefling, it would quickly be reciprocated in full. Once that bond was forged, it was rarely broken. 
The Underdark is a vast network of underground caverns and tunnels underneath the surface of the world. This dark cavern system is extremely dangerous. Besides the obvious like pitch black darkness, poor air circulation and getting lost, it is home to many predators and often hostile races such as the Drow, Turgar and Illithids. The first three miles down are known as the Upper Dark and it's here that surface dwellers and those in the Underdark most often meet. Though without good reason and in possession of a sound mind, any surface dweller would avoid stepping foot in this place. We cannot talk about the Underdark and then not mention the Drow, one of the most hostile creatures to live in the Underdark. Drow are a race of dark-skinned elves, hated and feared due to their cruelty. Most Drow worship the Spider Queen Lol, an evil goddess. They lie, cheat, torture and enslave. They are a people that thrive on malice, even amongst their own kind. Drow society is ruled by matriarchs, as males are despised by their goddess Lol. Most males are only looked at as being just above a slave, unless they show promise with a blade. There were some non-evil drow, and in a smaller number still, even good ones, though they usually don't last long within their society, and in the best of cases they make it to the surface world. In the worst of cases, when found out, they are used as sacrifices to their goddess. The last point I wanted to touch on in this video are the Dwergar also known as the Grey Dwarves, that make their home underground. Their kinship to other dwarven subraces could be compared to that of the drow to surface elves. In other words, they are generally to be avoided. They are as crafty and hardy as any dwarf, but with a strong sense of hatred and will for revenge. Quote, Consider that the Dwergar began as homeless outcasts, and today their fortresses are some of the most impregnable strong points in the Underdark. The question might not be if they will conquer the realm below, but when." End quote. The reason for their hatred is the generations-long enslavement by the Mind Flayers, the Illithid. This came right after a disagreement they had with other Dwarven clans. After breaking free from their captivity, they started carving out a new home for themselves in the Underdark, though faced constant opposition from its denizens such as the Drow and the Illithid. They still carry this bitterness within them, and so most Dwergar don't respond kindly to those not of their own kind. Hope this video gives you somewhat of a decent background for the game and helps you understand what is going on. Do make sure to check out some of my other lore videos on D&D if you enjoyed this one. As always, be well and happy adventuring my friends.